1981, I received an invitation to speak at the New York Botanical Gardens in the Bronx, New York. And every year, it seems, that they, uh, they had a uh, conference built around a s- consideration of a single plant and, or flower or whatever. And uh, this particular year, someone had the idea to do one devoted to tobacco. It was entitled Tobacco Use, Abuse, Substitutes, Marketing, and Clinical Effects. And it was to take place on June the 14th, 1981. And um, it, it was accredited by the American Medical Association for Continuing Education and the moderator was Louis Goldfrank, uh, Director of Emergency Medical Services at Bellevue and New York University Hospitals. He and I co-authored an article in a, a publication called Hospital Physician uh, on nicotine and nicotine poisoning, and I did another article in that same issue on smoking cessation. And among the other speakers were uh, Linda Rochelle, who was the um, um, she had a doctorate and was a historian on um, other aspects of botanicals, and she was going to be giving an introduction on the history, ecology, and botanical importance of tobacco and how it came to occupy a significant position in today's society. Dr. Walter Lewis of Washington University and the Missouri Botanical Garden spoke on tobacco additives and substitutes. Uh, Dr. Gerald Torino, a physician at the College of Physicians and Surgeons at Columbia University, on mechanisms of lung parenchymal destruction and chronic obstructive lung disease. After coffee break, Dr. William Costelli, who headed up the Framingham Heart Study, was giving smoking tobacco and risk of cardiovascular disease. Over a box lunch, my task was to give an overview. Uh, far from being a time-honored tradition, cigarette smoking, the only use of burned tobacco that involves inhaling, is barely a century old. Dr. Blum will discuss the cigarette in in historical, social, economic, and medical context since its appearance in the United States. It was really an overview of uh, advertising and the consideration by the health community of the toll taken by smoking and what he felt would be the solution to reduce and even eliminate this nation's number one preventable health problem. Following me in the afternoon, Jesse Steinfeld, the former Surgeon General, Uh, then a dean at the Medical College of Virginia, um, had a a talk entitled Smoking and Cancer, and then Charlotte Katz of the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development on Maternal Smoking and Pregnancy Outcome. Uh, John Grabowski, uh, who taught at the University of Pennsylvania and the National Institute on Drug Abuse, had the charge to speak on tobacco use, aspects of behavioral and physical dependence, and rounding out the day was Dorothy Sohn, S-O-G-N, a physician at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, on tobacco, its role in allergy and immunity. I can't think of any conference that was more thorough in its consideration up until that point of uh, tobacco. And I was very much looking forward to it. And uh, about a week before uh, the date of the conference, which was to be on June the 14th, 1981, I received a, um, a, a note that um, the conference would not take place. And when I called to find out, all I could uh, uh, hear about was that uh, there weren't very many people that had signed up for it. <clears throat> I thought that was odd because, you know, I, the show must go on. And I've known since I started speaking that uh, if there's an audience of three, you, you go out, you do your best job. My parents, when they were celebrating their, one of their early anniversaries, went out to a nightclub in a stormy uh, evening and uh, at the Capri Beach Club on, on Atlantic Beach, New York, and they looked up when they got in there, and the lights went down, and Pearl Bailey came out, and she looked around, and my folks were the only two people that had made it through the storm with a full orchestra and Pearl Bailey, and she looked at them and said, Honey, you're going to get the best show you ever saw. So I, I don't know how many people signed up to this day, but I was very suspicious of this, and it didn't take very long to figure out what had actually happened, because if you go to the New York Botanical Garden, the most prominent um, uh, fact related to tobacco that you learn is that the, the, the garden is partly located on the site of the old Laurelard estate. That's P. Laurelard and Son, the oldest U.S. tobacco company, makers of Newport and Kent. And there is the, Kent, the, the, the uh, Laurelard snuff mill. The actual mill where they made snuff uh, has been recreated um, on the grounds of the uh, botanical garden. And um, the Tisch family then the owners in 1981 of Laurelard or merged into their company called Lowe's, which also 
had uh, CNA insurance and hotels um, and movie theaters uh, were among, if not the, the, the leading benefactor, among the leading benefactors of the New York Botanical Garden. There is no question in my mind to this day that this conference was killed because of the influence of the tobacco industry on the New York Botanical Garden.